Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are here. This is going to be week number three of the APA Academy against Jacob as always. And uh, he has a really scary team, right? So he has a two Uber Fairies. He has the Xerneas as well as the Lele, I believe. Um, but in my head, I'm thinking that Sokaleo has a decent chance against this team, right? So you can see the matchup right away. He also has a Nihilego, which uh, I can do some damage against. But at the same time, he has an Umbreon, a Hippowdon, and a heckin' Megalade, as well as a Blastoise, that uh, can kind of shut down Sogaleo. So I'm going to have to play around that decently well. I do have a Salazzle that I think can deal with his team decently well. I have a Delmize um, that can deal damage here and there. But primarily, I'm trying to open the door with my Mammoth Swine and my Zygarde to try and take away some threats so that Sogaleo can win. So my Sogaleo is a really, really fun set. I genuinely think that it can win this matchup uh, outright. It is a flame charge with weakness policy, right? So he has a few mons that can do super effective damage, but not a ton that I think can Oko. Um, so I can flame charge on things like he does have a hail strategy with uh, Obama's note and um, and Alolan Sandslash, and he does have a few uh, Ice Mons that can uh, take a decent amount from a Flame Charge, and that would allow me to set up, and if he hits me with an Earthquake, then I get my Weakness Policy up, and I'm basically outspeeding his entire team, and uh, I can deal massive, massive damage. And uh, I do also have the Superpower as a final move, just in case uh, for things like the Umbreon, which... Uh, I'm, I felt really confident that I would get a chance to plus two superpower into it, and regardless of the attack drop, I feel really confident that uh, I would be able to kind of go back in and clean up the rest of his team. Now, when I originally drafted Sogaleo, I drafted it assuming that it kind of acted the way that Dusk made Necrozma work, and I assumed that it got both Autotomize as well as the Swords Dance, but uh, it gets neither, so... I kind of wanted Sogaleo to win, but I kind of had to uh, piece together kind of a janky way forward to win. I honestly got drafted to thinking that it did kind of set up, but uh, that's only for Duskmane and Necrozma because those are moves that Necrozma gets, but not moves that Sogaleo gets. With that, I'm just going to get into this matchup here. Uh, like I said, it is just a really, really scary matchup. Uh, I don't even really remember what I let off with, and I didn't, and I forgot to look at uh, the team preview, but he leads off with the Xerneas, and right away, I, I had to remind myself, is, is Geomancy banned? I'm, I was reasonably sure that it was, but I felt like this would be like a solid like, catch-all lead, and uh, Steelworker um, Anchor Shot did so much damage to a lot of his threats. Uh, this mod has a lot of special defense, which really uh, came in handy to, to be able to take a hit like that, but I am able to Anchor Shot, and uh, I deal a very, very respectful amount of damage, and now... From here, I have to decide what I want to do with my Delmize because it's kind of locked into Moon Blasting here, and I'm just kind of stuck in here for now. I end up just letting it go down to the Moon Blast, but I'm not at all confident that that was the right play. It does allow me to go into my Zygarde and get a very, very free Thousand Arrows. I believe this one might have been Banded. Uh, I generally, you know, stick between Band and Scarf, but uh, he ends up switching out, goes straight into the Powdon, and uh, basically, this thing can just eat whatever hit that the Zygarde wants to go for, and it kind of does think, but at the same time, I really didn't have too great a plays against a dang Xerneas. I was happy enough that I got to do that much damage to the Xerneas. Um, part of me thinks that I should have played off the fact that it might have been um, Specs or something to that effect, but regardless, this will allow me to go into my Blastoise straight away. I didn't really think that he was going to try to do anything crazy other than set up rocks. Maybe he could get up a Toxic. That would have been unfortunate, but regardless, uh, that's going to allow this thing to stay in and uh, as he switches out. So I'm going to get a free hit onto something. I can Rapid Spin for, it for all you know, but uh, I believe in this situation I go for a Surf. Now, uh, obviously, Nihilego has massive special defense and it gets boosted up by the rain, by the sand. And uh, I find out that this thing is Assault Vested. This thing is straight up Assault Vested, and I really cannot do basically any damage to this thing because it is just so strong. So now I kind of have to, you know, reassess, trying to figure out what in the world I'm doing against this thing because, uh, like I said, I'm really not doing a whole lot of damage. But um, I do end up trying to switch out into the Zygarde trying to kind of um mess around with it and i go for the toxic in this situation right uh i didn't think that he would want to see in uh especially now that i know that it's assault vested i know that there's like really no chance that it would outspeed me or it's not scarf so it wouldn't outspeed me um 
I felt like Toxic would be the play to go for, especially since he does have so many things in the back. I really expected the Hepaton to come back in, but he ends up going into the Blastoise. I can bring in my own Blastoise, but uh, we're gonna we're, we're kind of gonna put ourselves in a situation where uh, this really isn't gonna get either of us anywhere. But we both have to like kind of feel each other out, feel out our e each other's checks to each other's mods, and uh, how we're going to end up playing this mid game and try to set up an end game for ourselves. Uh, so I'm playing around. I go back into the Zygarde, assuming that he would want to uh, double out, I think, and he doesn't. He just goes straight in for another Toxic, and uh, it was super unfortunate. I don't... It, it was a tough call. It was a super tough call, and this match was full of incredibly tough calls, right? But he calls me out entirely by just playing Toxic. It, it will weaken my Zygarde, but if anything was gonna, if anything else was going to get Toxic, it would probably be my Zygarde overall. Uh, I end up switching out into my Mammoth Swine which uh was admittedly incredibly risky but uh he does pull a double so i call it something right at some point he ends up going into, into the umbreon and i really am trying to figure out what my best answers are to this dang umbreon but um i have to try to do something i just go for the stealth rocks on this turn try to set myself up for later in the match and at this point i'm thinking I'm not too, I'm not the most concerned about this Umbreon because I feel like I can wear down over time. And honestly, I thought this Umbreon would want to switch out as well. So I thought that the, that the rocks would be more free than that, but he does get the heal bell off and him revealing heal bell just terrified me. But uh, also this Mamoswine is subtoxic. So he's going to make a lot of what this Mamoswine wants to do really, really useless here, especially if he's going to synchronize a toxic back onto me, right? But again, the name of the game is not really, you know, counting Mons like, Getting in these um, trades, it's, it's about wearing his team down as much as possible and, and setting up the, and opening the door for my Soul Glaive, right? Because um, Umbreon is one of those mons where I have to be able to manage it because I need my Soul Glaive basically to kind of take a hit from foul play. And because I made my Soul Glaive so strong, because my Soul Glaive can just kind of win the, this match uh, in, in the late game, I believe I made it adamant too. Um, because of that fact, uh, foul play is going to do so much damage and it will trigger my weakness policy. So I will be able to retaliate with a superpower after that, but I have to, but before Sogaleo can really do much of anything, I have to be sure, be absolutely sure that my Sogaleo will be able to ultimately kind of, um, beat everything else that's on his team without, again, t having to take another hit. So his team has to be worn down. Rocks almost definitely have to be up. I have to figure out how I'm maneuvering my uh, Pokemon and setting up for for an in-game more so Galo can win, especially if if it has to take a foul play from full, which at right, at this moment, with how few answers I seem to have to this Umbreon, looks like it's going to have to be uh, necessary. But um, I try to bring in Salazzle. I try to get a hit off. He, again, he just has a bananas thick uh, Nihilego here, and it's not really going to be something that I have the best answers for either. But, um, even, even me, like, I was questioning whether or not he would bring the Assault Vest, but after knockoff, that almost confirms it, right? Because, uh, that last lock could be Toxic Spikes, it could be, uh, it's just South Rock, so many things. But, uh, the fact that he would tack on knockoff really just, um, makes it, uh, a dang certainty. Also, I believe my Salazzle in, on this matchup was Scarfed because, um, it, Scarfed was able to outspeed... Scarfs is able to outspeed Alolan Ninetales uh, under Slush Rush. So, and so was Zygarde. I may or may not have had my Zygarde Scarf too. I mean, it got knocked off and I wasn't making attention. So you guys may have seen it uh, as before I did. But that was the general idea because um, they were so fast that they could outspeed with Scarf over uh, even above and beyond um, Slush Rush. So from here... I'm just trying to do my thing against this uh, dang Umbreon, but I'm not making any, any headway, and I'm not going like turn by turn anymore. I'm just kind of like winging it at this point, but it's because there are so many interactions like this where it's just going to be uh, some stalling, some wish protecting, and some stuff that I need to... Like, like I said, I'm still in the assessing phase. I'm still like trying to figure out like how, what I can maneuver where and how to get things to where they need to be in order to have a chance at winning this matchup, right? So I do bring in this thing. Again, it is Scarf, so it does limit me a little bit, but... Um, he did reveal that he, that basically his uh, standard switch into it was the Nihilego. So I believe on this one, I attempt to go for the Hidden Power Ground. No, I just go for the Sludge Wave. Okay, that's interesting. I did end up going for another Sludge Wave. 
Um, maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I don't know. Regardless, it does nothing. And uh, now I'm taking rocks, uh, sandstorm damage. So it's going to limit, it's going to take away one stealth rock switch in. But ultimately, it's not the biggest concern for me right now. Um, I think I might have just gone for a sludge wave, uh, hoping for poison or something. But maybe, I don't know. I just thought that it would have to slack off in this situation. Regardless, he switches out. Uh, and I guess I go for another sludge wave. I guess I was just giving this thing up. Wow, that is uh, pretty bold of me. Regardless, I sludge wave again, and obviously understand it's going to do even less. It just does absolutely nothing against his knee, Lego. And uh, Jacob is playing this just uh, insanely, right? Because uh, he knows how little answers they have to some of his bigger, bigger threats. And honestly, without without the uh, Zygarde, I really don't even have the best answers to knee Lego like ever. Um, I have to kind of try and uh, beat it with Mammoth Swine. I think Mammoth Swine might be the only thing. Oh, but I think he just knocked off my spars. So I'm able to in power ground. And you see how little in power ground does. He, and uh, he just takes me out with another knockoff. But um, in power ground was never even going to really, you know, do it for me. And again, he has so much special defense that he's going to get the special defense beast boost. And now I can bring in Solgaleo. I can try my best to get something happening here. Uh, he does withdraw. I may or may not go for the flame charge. I would like to think that I do. I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe I just go for a Sunsteel Strike, just to try to get this thing out of the way. No, I do go for the Flame Charge. Um, but now I kind of have to hope that this thing can get worn down between Sand and between, uh, the Flame Charge chip to a point where I can take it out with another hit. And it reveals to be Figgy Bear. However, he made a mistake and he, uh, brought the wrong berry that would confuse him once he does get to 50%. So... This this was a really demoralizing moment, right? And I have to hope for kind of a flinch. And you can see just how offensive I made this Sogaleo. Because this Sogaleo is straight up just um, Zen headbutting and doing that much damage to a dang um, to a dang uh, Blastoise. If I had gone for the Zen headbutt instead of the Flame Charge, this thing could have gone down without without, without ever eating its Wiggy Berry. And it maybe could have positioned me a little bit better for the later game. But it's not even going to really matter that much because... Uh, he can roar me out, and I'm finally about to take this thing out, so I'm not going to get 6 out. I'm, fin I'm finally about to take this thing out with just a Mammoth Swine EQ, and he really didn't have the best switches in. Left to an EQ, especially uh, if I can just follow it up with a, with a, um, with an Icicle Shard, right? No. Icicle Crash, sorry. <laughs> okay, that was weird. Okay. But now he can bring in his Gallade, and now I really don't have any answers left to this Gallade. Right, so uh, I was kind of hoping that my dual scarf Salazzle with uh, Zygarde would be able to handle this Gallade reasonably well enough, but I really don't even have the best answers for this anymore. Um, I, apparently, I stay in. Maybe I just knew that he was going to go for a Sword Dance. Maybe I just uh, didn't even think that this was worth trying to preserve, but um, I was pretty darn bold and I uh, stayed in just to click EQ and I do a decent amount of damage, but that Sword Dance is really going to be unfortunate because now. Um, it limits my options even less again right so i still think there's a chance that i can win with sogaleo but i have to straight up win with sogaleo like right the heck now right i really am completely out of options like even if i had an option or two in the, in the beginning i'm out of options so uh again i do end up going for the sogaleo and uh, I think I know in my head that I have to flame charge b before I do anything, and that just allows him to go for the drain punch. I take it okay, not the best, but, uh, I know that I have to go for the, f for the flame charge first. He knows that I know that, that I have to go for the flame charge first. He's able to drain punch, get HP back, have the flame charge do nothing, and then, and then when I thought I could see a little bit of daylight in the end, he goes for the shadow sneak, which, uh, pretty much seals the match. Uh, I thought, I thought that, uh, because he went for the Drain Punch first, that he wouldn't have the Shadow Sneak. Obviously, Shadow Sneak is a uh, tough move to kind of find room for, especially with Swords and Drain Punch. Maybe Zen Headbutt, and um, maybe Close Combat if he needs some extra power. Drain Punch for recovery, Close Combat for the power. I don't know. He had a lot of options for that final move, even Knock Off. Um, but uh, the fact that he was able to find room for the Shadow Sneak kind of just sealed the game, and uh, it definitely sealed the game in a kind of i don't know i don't want to say demoralizing way but i but a but a really unexpected way in a way that really uh just kind of shut down any hope that i did have uh going into those last few turns but 
that is going to be how the match ends. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the EPA Academy. We will have ICBA playoffs as well as PGP playoffs, League War playoffs, as well as UBL playoffs coming really, really soon. But uh, once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, 